and we're going. We're going. All right. Um, I got this right. Okay, so welcome to Set Apart Podcast with Ronnie Reborn. Uh, if you're listening, you can catch this on YouTube at Ronnie Reborn. Uh, if you're watching it, you can check it out or look it up on iTunes. And today I'm here with the McWhorters. I'm here with Justin and in India, yes, yes. Uh, power couple. I'm here with uh, faithful ministers. I'm here with some real good people that I want you guys to uh, learn from. And that's what I'm here to do is to learn from you guys. And so um, how you guys doing? Great. Good, good. How you doing, man? I'm good. I'm thank good. I'm good. Us. Oh, no. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you. And so, um, like I said, you guys uh, have a wonderful ministry that I wanted you guys to share with everybody. Um, you know, we've got Justin, who's a hardworking father, provider. We've got India, who's an entrepreneur, mother. Proverbs 31, and um, yeah, I want you guys, no, no, and so I want you guys to let them know, because besides all of those things that they do, and the fact that they're serving their first ministry and their first purpose that God has given us, which is their household and keeping things together, you guys have come up with something called uh, McMarriage. Right, right. And so I just want you guys to share a little bit about McMarriage, and you know, I don't want to spoil it, but the date nights, just... Just, uh, I see it as a blessing for couples, married and unmarried, mm -hmm. and so just uh, just share with us, man. All right, uh, McMarriage is something that we established in um, 2018. Um, it was something that had been on our hearts for a long time to um, just capture um, videos and vlog type videos, just explaining you know how we do our marriage and about our family dynamics. Um, our children, our work life, um, our, you know, our love life, and just different type of things because um, we we meet with so many different couples. As you said, we do a thing called date night where once a month we meet with different couples and we do outings and things like that. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. But um, we wanted to just show people a positive, obviously a godly example of how you can have a positive and healthy uh, marriage. Um, so many people around our age group nowadays are – their average times of being married is averaging from one to four years, you know, some even two to three, and it's just kind of like an epidemic right now. So we just wanted to um, just show the world something and just establish something good, you know, for the social media, for the um, community in our generation yeah, right now. So glorify marriage in a right. way. I know that um, for a while it kind of looked like getting married was a trend. It was a thing to do, you know, you see the people around you getting married, so you just kept on seeing, you know, so-and-so is getting married, so-and-so. And, -so. and right. we just like, you know, okay, we want to help them get past that hump. So, um, you know, we've been through different different things. Everybody's story and everybody's journey is different. So for us, um, what we went through, we felt like it was good for us to share. We have a blended family. Um, we got married at the age of 20. Right. Um, we have, whether through different hobbies and different, you know, when I met him, he was into music, and then he calls himself retiring from music. So, <laughs> you know, then it was a different aspect of what he, you know, wanted to nurture and he wanted to cultivate in himself. So, you know, as we change and evolve, it's different important. Seasons. Yeah, it's important to kind of be in tune and in unity and sync with each other because that's usually when people want to disconnect. You know, I don't love you anymore. We feel out of love. You're not the same. And so that's something that Justin and I have been able to kind of push past our differences and our continual growth. You definitely have to grow together. You know, like she said, there's different seasons in life and different hobbies that she may pick up, I may pick up, put down, vice versa, mm -hmm. and just being a support for one another to be able to, you know, to be – um, patient with 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 your spouse during those times yeah. because we're all, you know we're growing you know it, during your our marriage years we were between um, 20 and you know we're, we're both 30 and 31 now it's a it's a it's a growing stage in your life to you know actually you're still getting to know your spouse yourself. more and more you're still getting <laughs> to know yourself you get to know how to raise your kids yeah. if you have children and different things like that so that's basically the basis of McMarriage. Mm -hmm. um, 
follow us on YouTube um, at McMarriage, um, Instagram, Facebook, all your social platforms is just McMarriage. Yes. Uh, we did a one season so far where we got about seven episodes where we dialogue about different topics and different things. And, you know, we're currently in the process right now of releasing the season two. two amongst different. On where? Where is the season two? Season two is going to be on YouTube as well. Okay. It's just currently in the editing process right now. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a whole bunch of other surprises that we can't let y'all know right about on, too, right too on, soon. So. But uh, the McMarriage brand is definitely um, gaining momentum right now. And we're going to keep pushing and keep giving you guys different um, different outlets of and different resources of how to, you know, pursue uh, a healthy, vibrant, godly marriage. Now, in what you guys were saying, we were talking earlier, just before we started this, and you said... Uh, you brought up the fact that you guys are a blended family, Brady Bunch. And so uh, I recent, personally, I've recently seen what happens when you don't respect the dynamics of a blended family. Mm -hmm. um, I believe, to say it plain, I think there's rules to that or getting into that that I think people overlook. And I think they take it to where uh, I've, I've seen situations where someone gets in a blended situation you meet someone who already has children and you kind of be so into that person that you overlook the fact that you know the child the all the things involved with that you could you just just enlighten some people on on um just noticing just certain things that it takes because i'm in my personal relationship you know in my own family i've seen it where not really respecting the dynamics of a blended family it could make or break the relationship so you know how do you guys get with that ladies first okay. <laughs> well um i grew up in a blended family but i feel like every blended family has a different situation okay. so in my blended family um my mother my father raised me with my stepmother and so um, my mother wasn't around. My biological mother wasn't around. But I didn't go and see her on the weekends. So you got the families where, oh, okay. you know, you get to see, you know, the other, si you know, families. So you time. have to deal with the uh, the mother or the father. Drama. I didn't have that. Okay. Our blended family was just like literally like glued together and that was it. Even for my, my stepmother's children, their father passed away when they were babies. <clears throat> so they didn't go to their dad on the weekend. Like, I see that. She was my mom, and their, my father was their dad. Mm. That was it. So that's how I was raised. But in our, in our blended family, um, my oldest daughter, her father hasn't been around since she was, um, before, I, before she was born. He's, he's been in prison since, she was five, since I was five months pregnant. So I, didn't ha I could have had it the same exact way as I had it growing up. I didn't have to deal with her family. I didn't, you know, I could have just, Justin's her father, that's all she knows. Since he was eight months old, he's been in her life. So that's all she knows. But instead of taking that route, I felt that it would be beneficial to my daughter when she grows up to know her father's family. So literally her grandmother stays the night over our home. She was literally here for five days this past week. Mm. Just, you know, True. we we do life with her, his side of the family so that she has that dynamic in her life. When she grows up, she won't have to question, mom, why didn't you have a relationship with them or why didn't you allow me? So, you know, Justin and I, young, 18 when we met, you know, from jump, I was like, you know, you have to be her best friend. This is before we even had a child of our own. Like, you have to have a relationship with Talia in order for this to work. She has to know that, you know, she doesn't feel like a stepchild. And I don't know, you know, personally, you know, to this day, you know, when they, once they start to become preteens or teenagers, they start to, you know, look at stuff differently. But I believe that Talia is comfortable enough to know that this is her father and that she doesn't, she doesn't show or feel any lack that, you know, I'm an extra kid in the family. Yeah. I believe that she feels comfortable and solid. She's not going to start pulling that. You know my daddy stuff? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't my daddy. I don't have to listen. I'm 13. No, yeah. But no, as she said, um, I came into this thing real young. I was uh, 18 uh, years old. Um, I immediately took on the stepfather role in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, and it's 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 been the same ever since. You know, for two years, it was just us. I mean, me, you, and Talia until we added, you know, our own to the picture, adding Emil, then obviously adding Jordan, um, which is our youngest, you know. 
but they're all two years apart. Um, you know, they're 12, 10, and 8. But they, um, they're they close. Um, I'm close to every single one of them. We all have our own individual um, relationship and, um, you know, interests that we do together and, and time. You know, some one of them is real into basketball while one is into, you know, more of the preteen stages and movies and music and things like that. So I kind of dab while my other may like slime or whatever it may be. Right, where, where, right. You know, we, we try to do individual time with every single one of them. And... Um, we don't we don't let that blended family stuff uh, put a label on us yeah. or stop us. He we're, doesn't call him her stepdad. No, we're, we're a fam. We're yeah. a family. You know, I'm I'm, I'm dad. I'm daddy. Mm-hmm. Whatever whatever it may be at the time. You know, when they really want something, I'm daddy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> when they want some money or something, but other than that, it's it is what it is. And it's um it, you know it's a beautiful thing. As India said, she was raised in a blended family. I've had my experiences with it as well. Um, you know, my mother and father divorced um, when I was at a young age, so I have um. I have stepsisters and brothers and sisters from, you know, um, my dad's different, you know, he's, he's married now again and things like that. So it's, um, it's, it, it, it can be a challenge, but it is what you make it, you know, just have to keep the communication line open and things like that. Be respectful. Yeah. Uh, I'm also from a blended family. Mm-hmm. My parents divorced when I was, I don't even have pictures of my mom and dad together. Mm-hmm. So they divorced. I just know them as being divorced mm-hmm. and uh, my mom's remarried, but she didn't have kids. My dad married into a relationship with kids. And so I know me, I never felt the stepchild thing. Mom's always treats me like mom, like, like a son. And so, um, yeah, I think it's just like, you know, what you said, I think that gets overlooked, you know what I'm saying? And as far as and I'm only sharing that because I've, I haven't been, I've been in, uh, I haven't been in your shoes as far as making a family. I've been in your daughter's shoes. And I see moms as moms, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, there's no, you know, uh, there's no like, well, she's this mom, that mom, that mom. Yeah. So I think that, you know, the way you guys are going about it as far as just treating her like your family, you know, it's not a thing. You know, if she wants to question or has issues, you know, it's not because of how she was treated. Yeah, right, right. right. And so um, that's important. But, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm here to talk to you guys, and, and let's let's get into the importance of marriage. And you know, I'm married. I've been through stuff. And for the people who think that, uh, like you said earlier, marriage is a trend. You know what I'm saying? Or it's just like a status. I'm yeah, married. Absolutely. They kind of overlook the fact that no matter how much you spend on your wedding, <laughs> right? <laughs> no matter how dope the pictures are. There's a lot of work to be done. Yes. Mm-hmm. And and the term or, you know, the, the say the saying a lot of work, it's not always bad. Right. It's good that it's a lot of work. It's good that it requires effort. Mm-hmm. I think it's good. And so let's just, as married couples, we can talk about how, you know, it's work. You know, um, I can't just, uh, well, I learned late in my marriage, you know, I can't just get into my feelings and try to make a point out of something that's a waste of time because my wife is an extension of me. The Bible says that, uh, you know, our relationship, your relationship with your, the spousal relationship supersedes any other relationship. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so there is no room for my feelings or, you know, her relatives, my relatives, you know, we have to gel together. And so, that's just to make it work. Mm-hmm. That's just to last. And so, you know, just as married couples, you know, we can talk about how how much work goes into simple things like communicating. Okay. You know, so let's just let's deal with communication. My my issue with communication used to be, uh, oh, uh, you know, I can't be myself around you. I got to say things a certain way. But you know, I'm coming to learn that it's important to say things in a way that your spouse won't take it the wrong way mm-hmm. and so you know anything you guys got in that area of communication as far as that being one of the works it takes to to uh have a happy marriage communication communication is key um in order to you know <laughs> in order to continue and having a healthy relationship um because there's always you know you don't talk and it's like well, you didn't tell me you were feeling that way, and now we're dealing with the aftermath because we didn't communicate about something. I've been there. So, 
Absolutely. Um, communication. Can you give an example? <laughs> oh, he wouldn't know. He wouldn't uh, know. He wouldn't know when he messed up. Um, example. Maybe, maybe, maybe in a sense of like, you know, I had something planned. I really wanted to go there. And then you kind of had another plan. And we kind of just maybe just went with your plan. And then a couple of days later, I'm like, oh. I, but I had this elaborate thing I wanted to do. And you kind of didn't even, you know, consider my. Consider or was it a priority? Yeah. Maybe things like that. We've, you know? run, we've run into all kind of different. Right you know lack of communication uh -huh. or even now it's like we have to we've gotten to the point where we understand like we have to communicate before church where we're going to eat after church because oh wow yeah yeah so we, we've, had, we've, had, no, we've had some of the <laughs> some of the the hardest Can, the, go ahead no no, no. Oh, okay I what you're you saying is right we had some of the hardest uh no holes bar take the gloves off yeah. arguments over after food. church over food. over food and it's not just us it's the kids and this so we 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 have it all the way implemented yet, <laughs> yeah. but we've came up with this thing now where before church we gonna give out three choices and we gonna whoever get you know outvote or whatever it is because it's like the hungrier you get the more agitated irritated, all mad that, all that. that's me personally like I tell her like if we gotta go <laughs> run to the store and go to um you know go to Michaels or Hobby Lobby and, and you know you gotta eat first all these places Bed Bath and Beyond Target. That's fine. I'm down with you. I'm going to do all that with you. I'm going to be right there pushing the basket. But I got to get something to eat first. If I don't eat first, I'm going to be in that store irritable, be ready to go, and I'm going to give her a hard time shopping. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, no. Go ahead. Those are, the, those are the type of things that you, over time, you get to understand, like, communication, handling things. Yeah. Before things get out of place, you have to know all the key points of we got to have communication. We just got a big check in the mail or we got some unexpected. We got to talk about how we're going to spend this money because we're going to look back and say, where did it go? Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Why did we spend it that way? And then we're going to be upset. So it's yeah. like you got to communicate about all kind of food, money, um, vacations, you know, the things with the children, you know, the schools they go to. You have to communicate about everything. You cannot overlook anything and just assume I can handle this myself. One thing that we do right now um – I'm sure you could do this on Android as well, but you know, we're iPhone users is um, okay. we have a, a shared calendar for the family. And oh. if I am scheduling, you know, a haircut, a haircut or, or meeting up with one of my guys for a lunch or a talk over some things or even a dentist appointment down to, you know, India and her business and renting out, you know, um, equipment and things like that, mm -hmm. we put it on the shared calendar. So as soon as I put it in the calendar, it's going straight to her phone to give her her notification. So it's like, we can't be out here over booking yeah, ourselves yeah. or doing things like that. So if we do know we have a date night in mind or um, a, a, one of the kids have a game, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, before we say yes, before we say yes to set up our um, podcast, I better look at that calendar yeah. to make sure that I'm free at this time because wow. double booking or you know, not prioritizing your time right can turn into simple arguments, you know, things like that. So it's it's that's just another form of communication that, you know, we've we found to be successful and yeah. beneficial for us is this that that joint calendar thing because, you know, uh y'all people got busy lives. We got a busy life. I work uh you know, a full time job, graveyard hours, India India runs three different businesses and then we got our three kids and they are businesses in themselves. So we, then we gotta figure out our time together. So, you know, um, consistency with um, communication and just, just creating that balance is very, very important and very, very vital. Mm -hmm. No, I really hope you guys, we're gonna implement the calendar. Okay. Cause yeah. just this morning, just this morning, I'm like, you know, well, all right, I'm about to get Craig and I gotta go. Where oh, well, you going? I need to, <laughs> you know. And so, hey, it, or you ever get this important. one? You ever get this reborn where it's like, uh, where are you going? Oh, I, I told you I'm yep. going to so and so to do so and so. Yeah. so -and -so. You did tell me that. Yes, we okay. did. We sat, we so were watching you that the movie. Calendar, you, we sat yeah. on the phone, you know, let me show you. Yeah. Look, bam. In your calendar. That's your bad. Argument, argument <laughs> thwarted. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And so, this is what I meant about there's work, it takes work. But just because the term work comes up doesn't mean it's hard work. Hard work. Yeah. Or, you know, or, yeah. You know what I mean? It's or, nothing that's yeah. going to turn you away exactly. from you. We uh -huh. just, we're just uh, bringing these things up to let you know 
the simple things that you take care of in the beginning don't turn into, you know, a blow up because you didn't tell me mm -hmm. that that's how you felt about something four months ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and when you could have just put it out there. Yeah. And so these are the these are the kind of works that need to be done to help, you know, keep your, your marriage uh, clicking and keep it happy and keep it fruitful. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And, and just like certain things, let's just use like, you know, fitness for an example. The more work you put in, the more results you're going to see. Right. Obviously, if you're a musician, the more time you're in the studio, the more songs you're going to put out. Um, whatever, it, whatever it is that you want to perfect or you want to um, improve, or your, you know, a craft or a hobby, mm -hmm. work must be put in. So as far as marriage, work must be put in. Work must be put in with... Uh, quality time work must be put in with learning your, you know your spouse's love language that's a whole nother topic work must be put in with um with prayer work must be put in so many different areas if you are lacking or you are not putting in work in certain areas then you're going to see negative results mm -hmm. and you're going to see the negative impact that it's going to cause so work 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 <laughs> you're all right rihanna <laughs> No, but, uh, yeah, I'm glad you guys are sharing these things because, uh, you know, marriage is, we know, you know, we, we read the Bible and we know that, you know, one of the first things that was attacked in the garden was the union of the man and woman. Because when the man and oh, woman are, are fruitful, you know, who knows what God's plan is for us? We know scripture says nobody knows or can't even think of what his expectations or right. his abilities are through us. And so, you know, the enemy tried to thwart that maybe not even six pages into the, And so it just goes to, I'm saying that because it goes to show how important a man and woman union are yeah. because they represent the family. They represent the health of the family. Right, it's you power. Know, yeah. And like, uh, uh, we know, here's the thing that I, this just popped up. What gets kind of twisted is, let's say your role or authority in the house. You know what I mean? Where uh, I know some women have an issue with <clears throat> just the way it sounds. The man is the head of the house, mm -hmm. you know. But in my experience as being married, head of the house is not, you know, go get my slippers and where's my coffee and my newspaper. It's that if I'm not on point, you know, that trickles down into how my wife is feeling and how my children are being mm -hmm. treated and how our businesses are being handled, whether it's just keeping the house clean or not. And so, you know, that head of the household, you know, outside of what the world would take it as, it's just that if I'm not healthy as the head of the household, it's going to trickle down. And so, like we were talking earlier recently, I'm trying to deal with my health. I got young kids. I want to stay around. And so this is where I've been. But I would like you guys to share. And I want to really hear from India as far as, you know, if you could just kind of break that break that bad energy around allowing your man to be the head of the household because it's not about letting somebody bully and waste time and you know uh first off the scripture says you find a woman you find a good thing mm -hmm. that's one uh second the woman is called a helpmate that implies we need the help so we're not finished without having a strong woman on our side but um you know, uh, how do you help? Here, okay, there you go. How do you help him be the head of the household? Okay, well, I think for sure it's been a learning process because I've definitely been in the place where you're, I, would, I don't know if I should say average, but a lot of households, you have a very dominating wife. And I've been that, I've definitely played that role in our marriage, um, probably majority of the time. And so as of recently, um, not not that I didn't ever want him to be in his place, but Justin was very absent and um, in certain areas where he could have been more dominant or, you know, put his foot down in certain areas. And when he wasn't, I was stepping up to the plate. So as we've grown and as we've gone through situations, Justin has definitely, um, he has definitely made his place, made his mark, let himself be known, his voice be heard that no this is what we're going to do this is how it's going to go and so now i'm i'm really walking in the submissiveness of, of being a wife and being a helpmate and i've always known about helpmate and everything but 
you cannot force a man to take his place. He has to feel comfortable in it. He has to know that's his place. He has to um, have his own voice. And so, you know, we definitely, we talked, you know, he's like, well, I got to tell the girls something five times before they do what I tell them. Or I got to threaten them with a whooping before they do what I say. But you get to come in and you can tell them something and they have more fear. With, and I'm like, well, you got to find your voice with them. And so now I definitely see that, you know, he even with me, you know, it's like, don't say Shut nothing up. else. And it's never, it's never disrespectful, no. He not, yeah, he not doing all of that. But he's like, he's just like, you know, hold on, hold on, hold on. And so it's now it's like, okay, let me just be quiet because, you know, I have to respect his voice. Even down to the fact where for years I've been praying for him. I've been more of the more spiritual head of the household. And just Justin has definitely stepped into now. It's like something is out of order in the house. And he's like, do we need to pray? And it's like, I've been wanting him to be that for forever. But now it's just like, it feels so, I, I feel like. Really? No, nah, like, I've been doing it. I've just been chilling. I just let her know I was, uh, <laughs> I was playing with that, with that girl. Yeah, and, and now it, everything, everything is like, you know, um, I think that's probably why you get a lot of women who are dominating because they want that. It's not that we don't want our man to be dominating. It's like. There's been times where you could have been or you should have been, you weren't. So now you're getting so used to having to be the head of something <laughs> to where it's like, oh, now you want to say something? Oh, now you want to, you know, but <laughs> we've had to, we've gone through counseling. We've had to check ourselves. We've, we've bumped our head like really hard to realize, well, this is why I was doing that. You didn't let me do that. And so, you know, I, I fell back. And so it's like I had to check myself. Huh. Oh, I that's him. To, that's him telling you. Yeah, because that. that's where we, we we've got we got to that point. <laughs> and so now we're finally at a place where, you know, I come under him with vision. I can come under him with, you know, our our, our decisions in our household, and and I feel comfortable. I feel like, you know, where he's heading us in the, the right direction. And I don't feel like, you know, he has us lost and everything. And now, but Justin's the type of husband where I have a voice. So it's not like he's so, you know, um, aggressive or he's not like, you know, those type of men. It was like a woman doesn't have a say. Thank you. He's never been that way. But now he's the type where, you know, I do have to calm down. I need to wait. I need to, you know, respect his opinion. And, you know, of course, we still have arguments over where we going to eat at. That's still, you <laughs> no, know. Not just you. Not just you. Always. That's the food. The food is probably one of our most common arguments. Is the food. Let me let me let you know. It's not just you. Well, we can't even get to food mm. because we'll stay stuck on. I'm going to be honest. One time, <clears throat> our, our routine, because we got toddlers, is we pick a time of the day where we see they're getting a little crazy. Mm -hmm. And then we go hit some corners. We go get something to eat. So it's like we put them to sleep and hung out with them. We have our time to just talk and, and like a little fake date. But it's really to put them to sleep. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, you know, they fell asleep one time. And so, you know, I'm like, where do you want to go eat? I, I don't know. Where, where do you want to go eat? I don't know. It's up to you. It's up to you. Okay, well, let's go over here. I don't want to go over there. You just okay. said it was up to me. Okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do? Well, I don't know. What do you want to do? And in my, I didn't tell her, but in my head, I'm like, I'm just going to stay on Foothill and drive until she finds a place Say to go. Something, huh? We ended up, we live in Rancho. We ended up. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. We ended up uh, Alasta. Where is that? That's where Foothill turns to Alasta right before Azusa. <laughs> hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me just say something real quick. But now, you, you that pass was a about, mistake. You did pass about six, I know about at least six Taco Bells, about 20 McDonald's, about and, Panda Express. You couldn't figure out so nothing. So what we're, what we're saying, no, no, it's not us. It was her? There is, I, I think it's the food spirit. <laughs> that's that's creeping into marriages and, yes. and tearing them well, up. I rebuke this food right <laughs> now. now Only the because Jesus. that's the toughest thing. That's the there's two things that I always get stuck on. One is before I ask my wife where we're gonna eat because I already know it's coming. Because but I'm gonna implement what you guys say. Like I said, this is uh, this is a helpful conversation. Yeah. 
Here's three. I'm going to drive. You're going to pick one. Yeah. Because I'm cool with all of them. Even the one that I don't like that I know you like. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yo, we, so, sometimes we got to settle. No, no. And I don't know. mind. Yeah, that's what I said. I'll, if there's three, I'll throw one that I like. I'll throw one I know you like. And I'll throw one that I hear you talk about, but I'm not fond of. That. That's going to be my so approach which, from which, now which on. So which one is that, you, that, she, that you're not fond of? Uh, so that way she'll know if she listen to this, not to pick it no more. Oh, see, I can't. I oh, love okay. them all. You see? <laughs> like I would. <laughs> you see, I love every single one of them. No, but I'm just saying, back to what I was saying about it being work. Look how something as simple as, you know, let's just narrow it down to three, honey. I'm cool with either one. You kick it around. I'll hit some corners and you let me know what you pick. That avoids you a... Uh, Three city uh, drive, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to nowhere, trying to be stubborn, trying to show her something, and so it's just little things like that. Because the day was fine, you know, the, man, the father's been blessing us, so the day is good. But it could take something as simple as that. Yeah. Well, what do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? Okay, well, let's go here. But I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, where do you want to go? Let's go here. I don't want to do that. That's why we got to plan it out from the beginning. Simple things like this, I'm telling you, will. Keep the communication open. We'll keep the, 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 let's call it vibe or the spirit of your marriage cool so that when when real things happen, you guys are already together. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so for, for couples, for married people, you know, just consider these little proactive steps little, that little you guys nuggets. are giving. Yeah, that it's just, it relieves. It's like taking the thorn out of your side mm -hmm. when you don't have to deal with something that could just ruin a day. It'll, it'll save you it'll, it'll save you so much time on the back end yeah you know just one thing that we we um got to the point of is we will start our day off with prayer and then um we'll literally discuss where to eat we'll discuss all the things that kind of almost bring arguments mm -hmm. we're, we're pretty good at about doing things like that or even discussing things in advance like i think like you hit me just 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 yesterday like Oh, so Thursday, you know, we're going to go to breakfast and go hit Walmart. It's like kind of already, yep. you know, because the, the, way our, the way our schedule is, is like I said, I work nights and she's home during the day. So we have a lot of time together while the kids are at school. So it's like, you know, how they said that old thing, you know, you have to uh, plan. I mean, yeah. if you fail to plan, yeah, yeah, you plan, yeah, you to, plan fail, to fail, like, yeah. vice versa. So it's like just, just plan these things out because it's going to get to a point where, you don't you don't want to be arguing. Well, you said we was gonna go so on, so you just just mm -hmm. it's just a little just do a little bit of work in the beginning, and it'll save you a whole lot of headache mm -hmm. in the end. All hey, right. so hold on, but going back to that question, where'd you ever eat at that day? Did you figure it out? No, no, we that, that, that was mad. that was one of those uh, <laughs> you know drive home quiet. Uh, ah! I hate those. Take the kids out, quiet. Get home and just eat some some top ramen yeah, noodles. You pissed go to off. your corner, I go to my corner. But one thing that you know, I am grateful for. You know, maybe at the time when she does it, I got something smart to say in my head. Right. Is that she's cool with going to her corner. I'm doing mm -hmm. my thing, yeah. and then next thing you know, you know, she pops in. So, you know, we don't stay on it mm -hmm. for too long. Mm -hmm. But we used to be knocked down, dragged yeah. out. That's another thing we used that to you're be speaking that. on that. It, you have to learn how to how to nip those things in the butt just just quick. I mean, it, it may take you know, you may have to give it an hour or two yeah. or whatever it may be. But you know, as, as the word says, don't let the sun go down to your wrath. You don't never want to go to sleep on that thing. You don't never want your the you know the husband or the wife to leave out to work or leave out to a vacation or a trip you know still harboring hmm. those feelings and still being mad because you know god forbid anything could happen do you want those things to happen on that watch yeah. that you know so you know a lot of times off if i'm leaving the house mad and i'm driving down the street i kind of give i kind of have this thing in my head she better call me by the time i get to the freeway <laughs> if she'll call me by the time i get to the freeway you know I, i'm you know you you try to be so prideful like i gonna text her but, but you still yeah mad? yeah he called me and then just whatever it may be so just just those little you know i hear a couple of say now i had talked to to, to to my wife in three days i'm like would you, you just would you just walk around the house just just ignore yeah. them? like what are that's you ridiculous. doing that's that's to me that's childish yeah like, you know keep it 100 that's childish that's that's like some little kid stuff like you know you go to school i'm not playing with so-and-so no more yeah they, they're not my friend like you you are married like what is how are you not talking to your wife for three days it's just, 
It don't make sense. It's dangerous. I don't think, off. like you said, we're, we're peeling off some layers that yes. people don't address. Yeah. It's okay to feel a certain way. Like you said, we might have left on bad terms, but you want her to call you. Yeah. It's not that you would rather her not call you. Yeah. Uh, we drove home in silence and went in our corners, but I'm relieved when she comes through and says, you know, how are you, you know, just yeah, on, exactly. like it, it never happened. Right. Good. Yeah. Like it never happened. And, and <laughs> I do want to add in that I don't, uh, I don't keep her there. Mm -hmm. Meaning I could have took that opportunity to be like, Oh, now you want to come in here and talk to me. <laughs> just try, you know what I mean? It's not worth it. Yep. It's not worth it. And this is something that I learned over time because, yep. you know, I'm from, you know, keeping a grudge. Right. And, you know, you, uh -huh. you know, you was this way then, but you know, in life, I've learned that, you know. And some, just some, let it go. some people they, they want that more so that formal apology or they want to um, address it. Um, we've kind of learned now recently, and I think I'm the one, the ones. The, what's the more so go back to it and address it and figure it out what i've learned now that india kind of just like forgets it and ignores it like, let's move on. so like you know because <laughs> i think at times when you kind of go back to it well let's talk about it, it can bring the argument back up again or I it can stir right. it back up so it's kind of like you know it's been times where you know it's been a few hours and then we're doing something else and we're laughing and thinking and i'm like well we said I talked about, you know, the argument. <laughs> Why you gotta bring it back up? Yeah. And then it's if it's worth discussing. If like say okay. if something I really like soft stuff. I feel know. like if it was a very disrespectful or something that you wanna make sure it never happens again. But if we argued about food earlier and it got you know, like so yeah, you still mad about that Cinnabon? Like, <laughs> why you gotta talk about it? Right, right. Just let it go. Like we're 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 good now. Like that's not anything you need to hash out. Yeah, it's done. What, look, I think we're we're opening something that I believe because I'm hearing it in your relationship, I'm seeing it mm -hmm. in mine, that you know the guys want to analyze it, break it down, understand yeah, that's, that's, where, that's, what, that's why, it. this and that, uh -huh. to where science of it. Yeah, okay. For what reason? Maybe it might help the situation. Maybe for next time. Or, or maybe for you know what I mean. But I think that's how we work, and. My wife is the same way, you know what I mean? Let her time go by, and it's like, whatever. It, ne it never happened, and um, I just believe that guys need to go ahead and just let it die, let it go, and uh, especially if it's like you said, is it even worth really sitting there, taking apart, we're wasting precious time going over something that only interests you? I think, like, the next time, it came up with the eating. I think that would be, okay, let's make sure that we figure out where we're going to eat so we don't have what happened last, last time. Week, right. Um, okay. That, that, because now it's really done blown over. Yeah, you're right. You know, uh, yeah, or that wrong, that's yeah. a better place to bring it up versus you're still in the same day. <laughs> and you want to, like, come on. Leave you know, it, it just took me two hours to calm down yeah, for a minute. I want right. that Cinnabon. Yeah, no, so no. I think the that's Dyson. probably a more beneficial time to bring it up. Okay. It's like, Okay, let's make sure we don't go down the same route we went down last time. Yeah. And so, you know. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. Well, like I said, I hope you guys are, uh, hope you guys are learning from this. This is Justin in India. Yes. Make marriage. Go ahead and let them know where they can find you again and just. All right. YouTube.com yeah. backslash McMarriage at McMarriage on uh, Instagram, um, MC. M A R R I A G E. Um, same thing on Facebook, McMarriage. You can find um, our episodes on there. You can find videos. You can find photos. You can find um, upcoming engagements of things that we may be doing, mm -hmm. uh, different things that we're going live or vlogs. So many different things. Um, like I said, we're working on season two right now. Um, India is working on some individual projects right now for self care and self help. Those will be dropping real soon. Uh, we have another major major project that's dropping um before the end of this year um that we can't get too many details yet just stay tuned but um yeah make marriage on all platforms your major platforms youtube facebook instagram is definitely gonna um, be able to um bless your marriage um even we even have you know some nuggets and stuff on there for single folks as well so you know uh, before you get into a relationship so um yeah. 
um just you know it, right now if you're if you're tuning in make sure you uh hit that like button make sure you subscribe and make sure you hit that follow button and get at us yep thank you for tuning in today mm -hmm. We love you, Ronnie Reborn. Oh, I love you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Set and Apart. So, Set Apart podcast. You know, uh, I just hope everybody appreciated this. Thank you guys again for having me here in your home. And we're out.